Going now to the global front, as the clerical sex abuse crisis continues to send shockwaves throughout the church, Pope Francis and thousands of Catholics convened in Dublin, Ireland last week for the World Meeting of Families. The major international event is held every three years, bringing together families from across the world to celebrate, pray, and reflect upon the central importance of marriage and the family as the cornerstone of our lives, society, and the church. It featured many talks and panels on the subject, and now we're joined by one married couple who spoke on the importance of mothers and fathers. Dr. John and Claire Grabowski are representing the United States at the World Meeting of Families in Ireland. They're authors of the book One Body, a program of marriage preparation and enrichment for the new evangelization. They have over 25 years experience in helping Catholic couples prepare for marriage. And I should give a disclaimer here. I know them personally as they helped my husband and I prepare for marriage earlier this year. John and Claire, it's good to see you. Thank you, Catherine. It's great to be here with you. Your talk at the World Meeting of Families was on why mothers and fathers matter in Amoris Laetitia. What were your main points? So as Pope Francis often tells us, uh, children need both a mother and a father. Mm -hmm. um, each sex has distinctive gifts that they bring to those vocations. Only men can be fathers, only women can be mothers. At the same time, there needs to be a certain amount of flexibility of roles within a family based on individual personalities and culture. Are motherhood and fatherhood valued in today's culture anymore? Uh, well, when people start thinking that you can raise children with just one parent versus a mother and a father, or two parents of the same sex instead of a mother and a father, then yes, they are devaluing the vocation of mother and fatherhood. Mm. The legalization of no-fault divorce followed the introduction of the birth control pill in the United States. John, you are a professor of theology at the Catholic University of America. From your point of view, what impact did the sexual revolution have specifically on the family? Well, oral contraception was kind of the jet fuel of the sexual revolution, but it was also a solvent that dissolved the ties between marriage, sex, and children. It used to be that people would get married, they would sexually consummate their marriage, and that would enable them to receive the gift of a child. What contraception said is you can separate those things. You can have sex without a fear of a child, without the need to get married. And with assisted reproductive technologies, now you don't need to be married or to have sex in order to have children. Mm -hmm. That's been a catastrophe for our families. I think the crisis that we're seeing in the church right now of the sexual abuse scandal mm. is itself the fruit of a deeper crisis of the family produced by the sexual revolution. I mentioned that you two have been, spent over 25 years in marriage preparation and you've written a book about marriage preparation, One Body. How do you think parishes can and should better equip Catholic couples preparing for marriage so that they do fully understand the church's teaching on life. And for Catholics watching who don't think they're getting that kind of preparation from their parish, what kind of tools do you recommend for them? Well, I think to borrow a line from St. John Paul II, who's quoting Jesus in the gospel, we need to put out into the deep. Mm -hmm. We need a deeper immersion in scripture, a deeper mm -hmm. immersion in the vision that the church gives us of why marriage, love, and life belong together. Mm -hmm. And that's not because the church wants to impose a burden on us. It's because the church wants us to, to experience a deeper life and the mm -hmm. fullness of what our faith offers. Claire might want to add to that. Well, yes, Claire, what do you think? Well, I think that um, what's clear is that we need to do more than what we're doing now it, to help couples prepare for marriage and to continue to grow during their marriage. Our book would be a wonderful thing tool to use, or there are many other tools out there. But it's just clear that we have to do more than what we've been doing. We can see that marriage needs the support of other couples, and we need to help them. And finally, for young people who are watching who maybe are afraid to say yes to marriage and are afraid to say yes to life within marriage, what would you want to tell them? Well, it's interesting because I met a young couple when we were on a bus tour here in Ireland last week, and I asked them if they were married, and their first response was, no, we've been together for five years, but 
It's too expensive, we can't afford marriage. Mm. And I just looked at them and I said, but you're missing out. You're missing out on the blessings of marriage, the gift of children, and the grace of the sacrament. There's so much out there for couples if they just realize that if they get married, the Lord wants to bless them abundantly. And I would just tell them, don't sell yourself short. Take advantage of what God has planned for you. It's a wonderful gift. That is a beautiful message. Thank you both, John and Claire Grabowski, for, for your work, for your ministry, and for spending time with us today. Thanks so much, Catherine. Yes, thank you, Catherine.